Hi there, welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about RSPs, what they are, why are they important, and why you should be using them. So first of all, to start with the concept of RSP, so what it is. RSP, it's a registered retirement savings plan that's created by the government of Canada to help Canadians save for retirement. So to give you an example to start, Let's imagine you're, you have an income of 60,000 a year and you decide to contribute 5,000 to your RSP account. So in that case, you will get a tax deduction for those 5,000 that you contributed to your RSP. So this means that you not only save for retirement that way, but also pay less tax um, in the present. So it's quite a win-win situation for, uh, for you. And uh, you might be wondering, what can you do with the money that you do invest in, in the RSP? So one thing to remember is that RSP is an investment account. It's an investment tool. It's not a savings account. So you can do quite a few things inside of your RSP. First of all, you can invest it in um, things like stocks, bonds, or mutual funds, for example. So that way you can diversify your uh, portfolio within that RSP. Um, also, uh, you have to know that RSP, any growth inside your RSP account is tax sheltered. So that means that you don't have to pay any money on the um, income that you generate within your RSP account. So that's quite beneficial to you. Um, and um, another point to mention is uh, withdrawals. How do you withdraw money and when can you do that? So usually you can start withdrawing RSP money when you retire. Um, at that time, you'll be most likely in the lower tax brackets. So uh, you will pay less taxes on your withdrawals when you retire. I uh, wanted to give you also some of the tips on how to make the most out of your your RSP uh, account. So first of all, you need to start early. The sooner you start, the better. Uh, compounding interest works magic um, when you give it time. So start early and uh, you'll see your money grow over time. Second, you need to contribute regularly. So make it a habit to contribute to your RSP account um, on a regular basis, whether it's monthly, quarterly, or yearly. It doesn't matter as much as the um, regularity of your contributions. So whatever you can afford, make sure to contribute to your RSP. Uh, third, uh, you need to maximize your contributions. So the advantage, um, take advantage of the contribution limit that's set by the government. So um, each year there's a certain maximum amount that the government lets you put in um, inside your RSP account. So um make sure to use use it um, use it as much as you can as much as you can afford to uh, fourth is to diversify your investments so within an RSP consider consider diversifying your uh, portfolio within uh, various um, asset classes such as stocks bonds or mutual funds so that way you decrease your risk and uh, preserve your, your capital at least increase the chances of preserving your capital as well uh, point number five, review and adjust. Review regularly uh, your RSP investments. Make sure they're still within your, um, within your interest, within your overall financial plan. And to uh, set up a financial plan, you can talk to your financial advisor and uh, they can advise you on how to achieve your goals uh, faster and more efficiently. Uh, and tip number six uh, is to seek professional advice. World of finance and investments and an RSP is ever changing. So if you do have any questions about um, any, any of them, uh, make sure to talk to your financial advisor and they'll be able to assist. Um, also, it's worth remembering that RSP is a long-term investment. Uh, account. It's not a savings account as I mentioned prior, so make sure to understand your financial goals clearly and invest accordingly. Um, in terms of potential for RSP growth, just to give you some relative numbers, so let's imagine you contribute 5,000 inside your RSP account every year for 30 years and 
with an average annual return of say 6%. So uh, in 30 years, you might have approximately over $400,000 um, on your account, assuming there's no withdrawals made um, from it. Um, also, there's some circumstances where you can withdraw money without any uh, penalties. Um, some circumstances such as um, uh, money for down payment for your first home or through a home buyer's plan. So that's a possibility to take your money uh, from the account. But uh, in other cases, you do have to understand financial and tax implications of uh, your withdrawals. Um, another advantage of RSP account is that you can um, carry forward any unused contribution room. So if you haven't contributed quite as much in the uh, previous years, you can definitely catch up in the years um, that go after. Uh, so that's another benefit of RSP account. Uh, also, um, contribution deadline is usually March 1st. Um, for of the following year for the um, for your income in the year prior so make sure to contribute accordingly contribute before the deadline uh, if that's uh, your goal to maximize your RSP contributions um, also uh, in terms of asset allocation as I mentioned um, slightly here um, it's worth diversifying your stocks between different classes such as stocks bonds or uh, mutual funds or various cash equivalents uh, one strategy to consider is dollar cost averaging so instead of trying to time the market or to beat the market um, you can invest a fixed sum regularly uh, from your RSP account throughout the year. So that way uh, you'll buy more shares. You're likely to buy more shares when the prices are lower and buy less shares when the prices are higher. So that way you um, leverage your risk um, in a way. Um, also, you uh, worth mentioning is that you have to designate your beneficiary to your RSP account. So make sure to um, do that um, at some point. So beneficiary will be the person who will receive your funds uh, when um, in the event of your passing. Um, also, how to make the most out of, out of your RSP contributions. So contribute regularly and consistently would be tip number one. Uh, instead of making a lump sum payment uh, once a year, consider setting up automatic withdrawals from your account. Uh, Tip number two will be to maximize your contributions. So take advantage of that maximum contribution limit set by the government and uh, contribute as much as you can. Um, tip number three will be to um, start early and stay invested. So time is your biggest ally when it comes to investing and RSP investing is um, definitely not, uh, not uh, it doesn't set itself apart from, from that rule. So. Um, stay early and um, stay invested um, throughout the years to come. Uh, tip number four is to diversify in your investments. As I mentioned, um, you can spread out your risk between various asset classes and uh, that way you decrease your overall risk and risk exposure. Um, tip number five will be to diversify, uh, to um, rebalance your portfolio periodically. So if you uh, for example, when you open the account, you want it to be invested um, equally among the various um, asset classes. But throughout um, the years, for example, one of your asset increased in value, another one decreased. So you can rebalance your portfolio to your comfortable level um, as you go. Also, tip number six, stay informed and seek professional advice. Uh, the world of finance can be quite complex in the world of investing as well. So talk to your financial advisor to um, come up with a strategy that works for you. Um, tip number seven, use your RSP refund wisely. So when you do invest in an RSP, uh, you will get a tax refund. Instead of spending it on uh, impulsively on whatever you like, consider reinvesting that money back into your RSP account. That way, you will um, you will maximize your financial returns over time. Um, 
In terms of the contribution limit, I uh, also wanted to tell you that uh, there's a few rules that apply to contribution limits. First of all, is an annual contribution limit. So the maximum, it's the maximum amount that it can contribute to your RRSP and that's set by the government. Uh, in year 2023, it is 18% of your earned income in the previous year up to um, $29,210. So remember that number. Um, rule number two is uh, maximum lifetime limit. Maximum lifetime limit as of 2023 is $1,191,619. Um, that's a number worth remembering as well. Um, rule number three, carry forward room. So if you haven't maximized your contributions in the previous years, you may use your unused contribution room um, in the future years. So this allows you to catch up on those contributions from uh, previous years. And finally, rule number four is pension adjustments. So if you are a member of registered pension plan, uh, your pension adjustment will affect your RSP contribution room um, and contribution limits. So the pension adjustment is a calculation that determines how much of your RSP contribution room is reduced based on the pension benefits that you have accrued. So uh, those are some of the um, rules that you have to remember in terms of RSP um, contribution limits. Um, so remember um, that uh, contribution limits are subject to change from year to year by Canadian government and uh, make sure to, to follow uh, Canada Revenue Agency uh, guidelines on that and talk to your financial advisor to the most up-to-date information. Um, and remember, investing in your RSP offers unique tax advantages and helps you build your retirement uh, uh, savings faster. However, it's um, Important to remember to stay within your contribution limits uh, to avoid penalties and other tax consequences and implications. If you found some of those tips uh, on RSP helpful for you, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.